blessings in Jesus' name. So, there's one thing that we must be aware of as Christians that our, our persecutions, adversities serve many things at one time. And only the all knowing God can um, know. Because He operates outside of time, He came before, and He transcends all that He creates. He says, I know all of my works throughout eternity. Now He knows them all innumerable, infinite works. Now, so, remember he created time, so that clarifies that. So, what our persecutions do is they place us where you can see in society that the devil is implementing a specific systemic collapse it's not an as a as a result of an ineptness or an incompetence it's not that because even the demons of hell are intelligent it's not because they can't understand their office these human beings now because let's draw the, the line between two the human beings who are in their office it's because the spirits behind them encouraging them are encouraging a collapse of the system so that they can implement remember there are evil spirits always trying to conquer people so what they're trying to do is get people to submit to their spiritual presentations so, oh I'm bored you hear the, the little child walking down the road and I'm not making light of this they say oh I'm bored what are they doing? Sort of signing a contract with the spirit of boredom. I'm frustrated. What are they doing? Signing a contract with frustration. Frustration goes, who's frustrated? That's me. And they're like, mine, mine. Do you ever see those seagulls in that cartoon? Mine, 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 mine. They're looking around all the time trying to grab. That's my one. That's my human. That's my human. That's my human. So that they can enslave them and implement them in the earth to enslave more because they have this sort of a greedy rapacity towards the conquering of souls. Because they do what they see their father the devil doing. So, this placement, you know, on the ground, on a mat, houseless, on the poverty line, surviving on two with cost of clothes and you know, laundry and expensive food because buying in bulk and cooking in bulk and um, buying the basics is no longer really an, um, an option for you because you people might say it's not so bad nowadays to be houseless, like because you have everything around you, like you go in there and get a bit of food, like. People are generous towards the homeless. You know, I've been sleeping down in that little alleyway for, I'd say I've been, I've been around for oh, for about two months, houseless, maybe over two months now. And not once, when I was down on the mat, sleeping on the ground, did anybody leave money. Not once. What does that say? They, that the evils of this world consider me their enemy. And the only way they would offer me money is if they felt it was a way that was going to entrap me and put me in a position where I would be compromised and more susceptible to their attacks. But I've seen people um, sort of begging in their sleep a cup out and a little sign and the cup fills up over the night so it, it speaks to a, a communication that's outside of the physical reality 
that's instructing it and it's undeniable and so and by the way I wouldn't accept it I wouldn't accept the charity because the government have an incumbency to actually provide for those in need who are willing to work. There's a lawful incumbency placed upon them to do so. And if they don't do so, they're breaking the law. They're cr they've become criminals. But when the evil spirits are over those running the prisons, they're bold in their crimes. You see the point? So persecutions, what they do is they place you in a position where you've got first-hand experience of the corruptions in society where Satan is trying to lay his traps and his blockades. So now what they're trying to implement in their pricing schemes in Tesco is factions in their customers, divisions. They're inciting divisions, building them, actually building the, those divisions, calling them club members. So they're breaking the law. Tesco are breaking the law in Ireland. And the Lord knows what other countries they're breaking the law in. <clears throat> because you can only have one price on Because you can only have one price on something on a shelf. Imagine you went into a clothes shop and it said, um, it's just because you're used to seeing club card, you see. You went into, say, Evolution there and they said, um, for the friends of the uh, cashier here, all those prices are 20 euros. But for anybody else, they're whatever's on the tag. Or they put two tags on the clothing. This is for friends of the shop owner, and this is for everybody else. And it would say twice the price for those who, who didn't know the shop owner. What are we seeing? We're seeing um, the building of divisions in society. We're seeing unrealistic pricing schemes that are not representing the true value of the, of the item on the shelf. And so they're playing with profit margins to create divisions and sort of place a duress on people. Well, I have a bottle of water here that was 45 cent a little while ago, went up to 55 and then 65. So they're nearly um, adding a third onto the price. Or, or a half of the original price. So one and a half times it's it's one and a half times more expensive I think it's the right way to describe it which means that the pricing of water production of water and the labor costs involved couldn't have increased that much in that space of time couldn't have so why the increase in price if your cost of running hasn't increased why would there be an increase reflected in your price? Has tax increased? Why are Tesco increasing prices so drastically that they make them unaffordable to some? Because they would have to be aware of the poverty line because there's a lawful incumbency placed upon them to make food and water available to all. To all. But their pricing schemes are now pricing people out of the running. Their club, their implementation of club card incentives is now an unlawful, uh, they, this is what they would call it, club card incentives, but it's an unlawful duress placed upon people to take their club card when they know that they couldn't afford to buy it at the non-club card price. You're ne you now have people under monetary duress you're now twisting their arm, making the laws. They're discriminating against people who don't have the club card monetarily, placing them below the poverty line. 
this is very serious. This is not a small thing, guys. This is an attack on Western society. Because they have priced those who are earning the least in society in a position of poverty. Whilst they're continuing to call Ireland one of the wealthiest countries in Europe and failing to provide gainful employment and adequate housing. Now, why would Satan make such a mess of things? Well, one is to exploit that and to keep people under the duress we're talking about and get them to join clubs and sort of come on in house and submit to me. That's what Satan's up to. But the other thing is, while that's occurring, it becomes so blatantly obvious. He's had to make it become so blatantly obvious that the system is failing the way he's failing to implement it because the Constitution of Ireland is actually very strong if it was implemented properly. So the, their failure to implement the Constitution of Ireland or break the law is also showing that there's an ineptness and an incompetence in government that couldn't possibly be as a result of a genuine ineptness or lack of knowing, that it has to be a calculated failure to do their job. And this calculated failure to do their job is just that. It's done on purpose to give people the impression so that it cannot be anything but obvious to people that they're not doing their jobs properly. Now, what they want you to believe is that the system's failing. They will place the blame on the system, even though the Constitution of Ireland is very effective, has been historically, and is one of the strongest constitutions on the earth. Despite this, they would tell you that the system's failing simply because they've corrupted those who are in office. So that's what's happening. They are corrupting those in office. Oops. Excuse me. They're corrupting those in office in order to give the impression that the system's failing when it's those in office who are failing to implement the system. So that they can turn around and say, the system has failed. So now we need a new system and a new government. And that one would have the basics covered so it would appear that people are better for the change. But in actuality, people have been imprisoned by the change. Because you can have a whole load of happy slaves. You can have people walking around, oh, I've got my new house, got loads of clothes, I've got food in my larder, and even money in my pocket. Who owns the house? Are you earning enough to buy a house? How many people can put up their hands and say they are? At the age of 20. Because that's when people used to be buying houses. Getting married and buying houses at 20. You know, people are living at home with mammy at 30. They're living... Does that make me a hypocrite? No. It makes me a perfect example of how the system is failing. To provide for those willing to work. So our persecutions place us exactly where we need to be to expose what Satan's up to. Because God doesn't make mistakes. So we advance forth, we expose their corruptions, and then the Lord of Heaven can choose what he will restrain and what will come to the earth. The purposes of removing the evil from it. Now we know as we know as um, Irish people generally speaking, Irish people would be, have a, a generally good education, level of education and relatively articulate and relatively knowing. But the new generations coming up are being deceived because things are being redefined, repackaged, reworked, so that the effectiveness in understanding something is no longer apparent or implementable. It can no longer be implemented because they don't have the true value of things, the true definition of things. They don't have, they don't have the true knowledge that's required to properly function and 
uh, ensure the true social order of that society. So whilst they know the constitution, they don't implement it. And what they would implement, even though it would have the appearance of affluence and prosperity, is enslaving people because people don't have that independence from the state that is required to avoid that systemic corruption further enslaving the people morally because once the, once they have you financially then they can start forcing you to partake of things that are immoral in order to maintain and retain that which is necessary for body and soul to remain together so they're manipulating um, displacing incentivizing they put the money where they want so they put the money where they want you to focus or the the benefit where they want you to focus in other words so what's happening then they put the money where they want you to focus they put the money where they want you to submit to mammon so they say club card oh club card benefits you get 15 extra gigabytes a month that's a twice the amount of gigabyte of data all you could possibly consume in a month oh, no, 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 no. and what are you doing submitting to Tesco Club what's the original meaning of the word Tesco where's the origins of the term what's the etymology of the word where does it lead to what's behind it have you googled it the original meaning of the word More importantly, creating divisions in society is unlawful. Putting two prices on something and saying it's that price to that person and that price to that is unlawful. So Tesco are breaking the law big time. It's not something small. It, it's not something, oops, oh, we shouldn't have done that. We overstepped. We have a toe over the line. Quick, correct that. This is blatant, calculated. And it's been implemented very boldly and there's a big drive on now to implement it and they're breaking the laws of the land in doing so and their, their financial advisors would have to know this and so what's happening is they keep you afraid of covid with your mask on locked down in your house while they're corrupting this the system like this so that by the time you come out of your box room or your den haven't had your head in your PlayStation. You don't. I mean, you don't know what's happened. Everything's rearranged. Well, where do you start? Uh, where do we start? The, 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 the unlawful pricing schemes. Will we start there, or uh, the failure to provide for those willing to work, uh, turning Osnham House into a drug-taking facility, uh, telling people that the state are going to give them charity by referring them to a place claiming to be a charitable organisation who are. It's just topsy turvy land. It's upside down. Then where do we look? The High Court? Oh, we'll test that. We should test that. Oh, by the way, we didn't test that. But here's the court's conclusion. Oh, why didn't you test that? We abandoned it halfway through. Why didn't counsel tell me? Why didn't counsel tell me? Oh, you thought they were your counsel? <laughs> Why didn't they tell me? Would that, wouldn't that have given you enough time to respond in a timely manner? Sure, how would we have been able to fail to test the constitutionality of the sections that were we said we'd test? If we told you in a timely manner, you would have been able to protest it and contest it. We wouldn't have been able to pull the wool over your eyes. We'll tell you you've won, you've had your things quashed, and then maybe later on what we'll do is we'll appeal it, even a month and four days late. Oh, then we can say case closed. But you can't you can't appeal an, unf an incomplete case 
and you can't case close an incomplete case because they haven't fulfilled the schedule of the court so even the high court are breaking the law it's the high court big business tesco osnum house top of society bottom of society provision of food they're all breaking the law they're trying to enslave you corral you into joining a club and you don't even know what you're getting into into the beast system that will carriage people away to hell wear your mask don't forget to wear your oh 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 the mask and all the old people wearing the masks ooh, no, 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 no. do you not do you not are you not uh considerate of, of the old people with the masks they're such an inconsiderate man old people die every year because they're old all you're doing putting a mask on them is making it difficult for them to breathe while they're, while they're old that's the cruel thing oh and lock them down their house so they can't see anyone here's another one so Satan's a cruel master any opportunity he can get to do cruelty while he's implementing his corrupt systems he'll do it So it's like a distraction, a decoy. Oh, look over there. Look how bad it is over there. All right, right, do that here, quick. They're all looking over there. All right, do that corruption here now. All right, oh, look how bad it is over there. All right, right, move over there and do that corruption. And by the time they've realized corruption's happened, and by the time people have come out of the house, taken the mask off, they're just like, oh, we're out of the house again. Oh, I can take off the mask and go on the bus. By the time they come out and all the corruption is already in place sure if they're only young children they wouldn't have any awareness of it the systems and how they're supposed to be run and the constitution how it's supposed to operate and why and how that's supposed to um, preserve true social order and what, he, what that even means they should have wouldn't know so, so so by the time they come out of the house they're just kind of waking up from a month or two months of box sets on Netflix that was corrupt in their mind or PlayStation, which was corrupt in their mind. And they're just coming out, getting fresh air, probably looking at their new kicks and not around them. So what are they doing? Putting so many blockades in place and corrupting society to such a grave extent before people come out of the house. That by the time they come out of the house, it'd be too late for them to start exposing it anyway, because they'll have hit the ground running. So that's why the Lord places us. Because we've been exposing it all the way along. Not afraid to come under the persecutions that would arise for so doing. The light of the world. So what happens? We continue to expose it. Do people listen? We hope so. Because we've shown the High Court is corrupt. The Housing Department, the Emergency Housing Unit, corrupt. And more, more people will tell you the same thing. Osnum House is a drug-taking facility. And the, the guy in the Emergency Housing Unit will tell you that other people have told him the same thing. And they've done nothing about it. And he used to work there. And now he refers people there like an agent and they pay 80 euros a week for a place that doesn't meet hygiene or living standards. But the guy in the emergency housing unit is referring people there. I would put families in hotels because like you can't have them on the side of the street. That would be too blatantly obvious. People will know there's something seriously wrong with society if that starts happening. So stick them in a hotel room there off the street like typical Irish brush it under the carpet there until people are walking into the room tripping over the carpet then we'll do something about it babies in sewage tanks women in laundries now the babies are aborted the Lord knows where they're where, and the Lord knows where they go what they're used for where their blood goes it wouldn't be beyond the evil ones to drink it 
or to put it in their own bodies because the life is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 7, says the life of the creature is the blood therein. So they'd be able to inject younger and healthier blood than they'd be able to manufacture with their own body. So the Bible says there's some things they do in secret that are not worth talking about. But that is one that's worth talking about. Because now you see that all these things happen for a reason. There's a reason for th their doing it behind the scenes. An evil reason. Mimicry. So what are we seeing? We're seeing a collapse of society. And these, these things are nothing new. But there's a, a specific drive on, and Satan is always looking because he doesn't know the, tr the future. He's working with probabilities, and he's always testing the waters with a toe. I'm trying that. Let's see what I get away with there. Push this further and further into corruption. I want to do that. Uh, he's kind of looking around, seeing what's coming, coming into the earth. He's trying to turn men of God to serve him. He's trying to corrupt us and exclude us. Twist our arms. Buy him. Pay him. See what his price is. Du -du 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 -du. You know, Prancer, Dancer, Dasher, Blitzen. All the deer kings, the reindeers, reigning deer. Yeah, they're the men he corrupts in the earth and gets them to implement his structures, the Freemasons, Jesuits. And he incentivizes them monetarily with young women and all sorts of things that they could possibly consume in this temporal realm. And they'll implement the wisdom of Solomon to preserve their flesh and avoid harm while they're walking this plane so that they can continue to do their slaying. So Satan on his sleigh with the reindeer kings pulling it. Slay S L A Y. So that's what they're doing. Yes. The mechanisms by which Satan uh, uh, intends to kill. So the point is that we're seeing society falling away into a worse, a worse state of uh, decay. And of course, the evil ones would try to start telling you that evil is good. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. That man just kicked the puppy. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. Actually, the definition of kick is really to sort of swing, like reach back and swing your leg forward. That was just a push. So all the time they're trying to lesser by wrong definition, wrong interpretation, corruption of doctrine, how one perceives their evil as evil. It's not so bad. The woman goes into the abortion clinic. She's sedated. The little slice in her side, and they take the baby out by removing its head and its arms and legs. It's just, you know, it's just butchery. Then the Lord knows where the little baby goes. But the woman comes out, she's stitched up, and a few weeks later, it's like nothing happened. Nothing about the lifelong scar, potential damage to her womb, the fact that she's now a mother who had her baby killed for 800 euros because Netflix defiled and soiled her view of what it is to uh, tear a baby out of the womb and remove its head and legs. And people got around and they said, oh, it's so expensive to live in society now. Finances. Oh, um, um, uh, uh, housing. How are you going to do this? You can't do this on your own. We can't afford to do this. We can't afford a baby right now. You are going to college. Oh, panic stations. Oh, go down, quick. We, well, 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 we can manage the 800 euros. How much does a cut cost? Not 800 euros. You can get a lot of nappies for 800 euros. So you have enough money to get the baby to one year old. 
a hundred euros to have her killed. So, what's happening? They're manipulating you. But what if the what if the girl is raped? No, I'm, I'm not may, I'm not being facetious. I'm showing you how anybody can manipulate their face to appear as though they're genuinely concerned. But what about the young lady who has been raped? The poor young lady. What? Like. She might be 14 years old. Is she even fully developed yet? Is her pelvis fully developed? Can the baby pass through the birth canal? Like some girls at that age are very small. Structurally speaking, their anatomy is not ready for that. Oh, but it's ready to cut them open. And butcher the baby. Is that a lesser evil? than the rape so the, the the oh so now society thinks it's a good idea to punish the innocent baby in the womb for the crimes of a rapist because somebody said the poor girl sure even the rapist could do that if he intended to butcher the baby as well Look, I'm really sorry for what I did but you don't you shouldn't have to go through this you shouldn't have to go through birthing that baby. It's too much for you. Whatever about the rape I did to you, I'm sorry for that. I'm a changed man now. But 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 the baby, but the baby, baby should be punished for that. And that sounds reasonable. But it's not allowing the baby to live is not avoiding the baby being punished. So I say, well, who, who should have to live in poverty if we can avoid that? So why doesn't everybody just go to the edge of the cliff and jump off? Wouldn't that solve all the problems? You see where they're leading you in your thinking. They lead you to a death mindset. Death is the solution. Because death is making its appeal through media. So everything their rhetoric speaks is death. They speak death. And they try to make it rash, appear reasonable and rational by giving you some diversity to try to ground their rationale. So what does the devil do? The devil looks to evil to try and reason for more evil. Because if you imagine, he's only able to maneuver in the darkness, right? So he, has to, so he has to create a dark thing, an evil thing to step on. Because he has remit there, authority there. Oh, step over there. Like lily pads in a pond. And then chuck another lily pad. Step on that one. Like a sort of a frog or something. And then chuck another one. Step on that. See the point? So it's evil unto evil. But he has to try to... He's going into a new area of the pond now. Hi folks, I'm going to put this lily pad there. And there's light around that lily pad, you see. So he has to try to convince those in the light part of the pond that it's perfectly reasonable to put that lily pad there. On the basis, on, from the point of reference and from the perspective of the positioning of the lily pad he's already standing on. Because he's got to speak darkness from darkness to darkness in the presence of the light. And get those in the light. See, hear that noisy pigeon? In the presence of the light. To give you the impression that the placement of that lily pad is something perfectly reasonable. So sil silver tongued devils come along. And they try to prepare the ground for his placement of the lily pad. They're demons. Cosmic powers over this present darkness. They talk fast, talk often, talk nonsense, and make it sound good. Because they've studied the mind, anatomy, physiology, and spiritual things 
uh, and things of the heart of man so that they can try to manipulate him. And these are dark arts. So they use inflection and manipulation and inflection of voice. Very powerful stuff. You can even sort of speak energy into a thing, you know? A bit of a life into it. And not intend it. Or you can be kind of like rather guttural and low and kind of all a bit bummed up and uh, that can kind of create an atmosphere around the place and people can kind of start feeling a bit low if you keep going on that tone for a little bit of a time like and then you'll notice if you go into the Catholic, Catholic Church the priest going and then all the old ears go it sounds like a hairdryer it's about to break You're kind of going, something's going to give in a minute. Then they bring out the baskets, put your money in there, and you go away. But what about the Bible? Isn't this a Christian church? What gave you that impression? Was that singing? It's like somebody deflating a balloon. Evil. So they're le trying to lead people to death. So that means they have to make life appear as death and death appear as life. And what do they do? Make the creature comfortable. Now he's about to die. He's probably got about two days, so we're going to make him comfortable. How are we going to do that? We're going to poison him so much that he can't feel anything. It's called anaesthetic. And society is in a state of general it's generally anesthetized, catering for the creature, ringing all the bells of the fallen nature. The woman's wearing the clothing that accentuates the parts of the body that man is most stimulated by. And this is done using contrasting colors, creating lines and drawing the attention of the eye, which accentuates and probably increases its effect on your physiology and the impulses and urges that are fallen of your body. They're exploiting your fallen nature to lead you to death. So people are medicated. And that's the devil deceived the whole world by his sorceries, medication. <laughs> Uh, coffee might give you a bit of a boost. Oh. Oh, really? Supporting local business. Rather than partake of his evils. Isn't it amazing how the man who's gambling every day has a house to go home to? So remember, there are those gamblers who are there to promote gambling. Because how would anybody start gambling unless they knew gambling was there? So the devil has witches and wizards going through the motions. So the ones you see coming out with the mask on first are the devils. Promoters of wearing the mask. Do you see how it works now? Because they've got to create, they've got to place the lily pad in the pond, in the area where there's light. Say, oh no, wearing a mask. Um, see this? Mask wearing? That's what we're doing now. Monkey see, monkey do. 
oh, I'm placing two prices on, prices on the same product. That's what we do now. Oh, I thought club cards was where you accumulate points for visits. And you're kind of, you're gifted. Oh, it still does that, but it does this now as well. It's creating divisions in society. Why do they do this? So they can exploit your, you monetarily and force you to join their club to get you used to joining the club so that when they implement their new system because this one has failed they'll tell you even though they weren't implementing this current system they weren't implementing the constitution of ireland but they don't want to follow it so they want to give you the impression that it's that that's failing brilliant plan it's the constitution of ireland that's failing not us we're good people we just can't behave like adults in the doll but rather debate and argue like teenagers who haven't been told yet that's not the way we talk in society. Stop lads from down Cork or something shouting far too loud in the doll. Promoting another spirit, the spirit of debate, the spirit of argument. Meanwhile, they're not doing their jobs. They're making a lot of noise while they're failing to do their jobs. So we, we need to expose it. We need to say, this world structure is decaying and will continue to do so until the return of Lord Jesus. But Lord Jesus is on the throne now and he can even restrain darkness now for all to see so that they would recognize he is king on the throne in heaven now and so that they might choose to return to him we tear down those strongholds and expose the corruptions in society so that the lord by our, by our, our faith in him will work through us to correct those things in society that might otherwise cross a line that would impede upon uh, the ability of those who love the Lord to come out from the world. He won't accept that. Remember what he said to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah, that if there were a number that would come out, he would even spare the entire place. So he will do great things to assist and facilitate the coming out of the world of even one person so don't fear the world come out come out of witchcraft because the Lord God won't allow Satan's um, behaviors to be more than one can bear so come